Hello everyone, this is the Insert Title Show and I am your host, Wolf Strife. On this episode, I'm going to be talking about Indiana Jones and the Seven Veils. This book was written by Rob McGregor and came out in 1991. Unfortunately, I have to say I really didn't like this book all that much. I mean, there were some parts of it I liked, but overall, it's just a eh. I mean, it's been a long time since I've read a book that I didn't like. I think the last book I read that I did not like was about two years ago. I think it was called The War That Killed Achilles. And I actually stopped reading it about 60 pages into it because I could just see where the author was going and I just vehemently disagreed with her and just, yeah, I didn't like where it was going. So I was like, all right, fuck this place, man. I'm out of here. I'm not going to waste my time on something I don't even like. So, yeah. But the thing is with this book, I didn't realize I was going to dislike it until basically the last like 50 pages or so. so it kind of kind of snuck up on me there. But the beginning of the book is really good, like Indiana Jones is down in Guatemala doing an archaeological dig, and then uh, all of a sudden a bunch of like Tomb Raiders show up and try to kill him and shit, so that was a really good beginning to the book. And uh, yeah, some other parts of the book I liked was, um, well, uh, Indiana Jones is still dating uh, Deirdre Campbell from you know the last book. And uh, the two of them are kind of, you know, having a rough time with their relationship. But they actually end up getting married on a cruise ship going to, um, I guess, sailing from New York City to Rio de Janeiro. So, yeah, that was kind of interesting. Indiana Jones getting married for the first time. I mean, I think the book takes place in 1925, I think. So Indiana Jones is like 26 years old. So, yeah, it's a good age to get married. But naturally, his marriage goes the way of James Bond's marriage and uh, doesn't last too long, but it's not that big of a surprise. I mean, we all know that he ends up marrying Marion Ravenwood. It's kind of hard saying Marion and Marion. Yeah, well, whatever. But yeah, we know he uh, ends up marrying that chick, so yeah. But uh, yeah, it was, it was interesting, and uh, I actually really enjoyed the cruise part of the book. It's kind of cool reading and imagining what it would have been like to go on a cruise back in the 1920s. And oddly enough, it kind of sounds pretty damn similar. I mean, there would have been swimming pools, there would have been stores for you to go shopping at and stuff, and um, dinner every night would have been a black tie event. So yeah, it was pretty cool imagining that. And uh, some more parts of the book I liked was um, when Indy and Deirdre get to Brazil, you know, they're walking around Rio and a couple of uh, shitty towns around Brazil and stuff. So that was kind of cool. And I guess the uh, main plot of the book is that Indiana Jones is on a quest to find Percy Fawcett, who was looking for a lost city out in the middle of the Amazon. So that was pretty cool. And seeing how I saw the movie The Lost City of Z in the theater, that was really cool because I, well, I knew who the fuck Percy Fawcett was. So I was definitely interested in uh, these two uh, people meeting, I guess. Yeah, well, and I mean, Percy Fawcett was probably one of the many inspirations for the character Indiana Jones. So, yeah, that was a, that was a good idea having Indiana Jones go looking for him in The Lost City of Z. Now, my problems with the book are, I mean, it's just a weird book, just a lot of weird shit. Like, basically, the Lost City of Z turns out to be a bunch of Celts who somehow got from Europe to the jungles of Brazil and set up this um, weird city that is protected by the Seven Veils, and the Seven Veils are, I guess, kind of these telepathic powers that the Celts can use to defend themselves and hide themselves and stuff. So it's just fucking weird. And they don't go into much detail about how the fuck the Celts got over here. But judging from the title of the next Indiana Jones book, the Genesis Deluge, maybe they got to Brazil during Noah's Flood. So I don't know. I guess uh, I'll find out whenever I get to read that book. But um, yeah, it's just a lot of weird shit. I mean, it definitely screams of late 80s, early 90s, this kind of weird writing. 
I mean, I liked Bob McGregor's second Indiana Jones book. His first book was okay, but I liked his second book. But I feel like with this one, he's kind of taken two steps back. I mean, I cut him a lot of slack with the first Indiana Jones book. And then, you know, I was rewarded by the second book being a lot better than I thought it was going to be. But then when I get to this one, it's just, eh. Though on Amazon, a lot of the reviews say that the next couple of Indiana Jones books that Rob McGregor wrote are pretty good. But then the last one he wrote was just supposed to be just fucking weird and just kind of shitty. So, yeah, I'm not exactly looking forward to reading more Rob McGregor Indiana Jones books, but I don't know. I mean, this one isn't god-awful start to finish, but, eh, you know, it's just fucking weird. And there's not even a good antagonist in this one. Like, I mean, naturally, there are people trying to kill Indy, but none of them are really adequate antagonists, I think. So, yeah, that was kind of another thing that bothered me. And the book has just a... Very anticlimactic, very tragic, and just weird ending. So that's never good for anything. You know, movie, book, TV show, video game. That's just, yeah, that's just, most of the time that just fucks up the entire thing. So, yeah, it's just not that good of a book, but I still love Indiana Jones as a character. So I guess one day when I feel like it, I'll go ahead and get the next Indiana Jones book and check it out. But for right now, I think I'm going to take a break and read some other stuff. Maybe I'll actually read the book that inspired the movie, The Lost City of Z, because I really love the movie. So, you know, maybe the book would be even better. So, we'll see. But yeah, as far as this one goes, eh. I mean, don't skip it because... Each one of these Indiana Jones books connects to the other one. So, you know, you really do have to read them all. But, yeah, this one was just, eh. So, I don't know. <laughs> I guess check it out if you want to, but I don't know. It's not nearly as good as The Dance of Giants. So, yeah. <laughs>